Hey guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new, my name's Ava and welcome. make this point really quick before I list off all these things and misconceptions is that if you believe any of these things or formally believed any of these things that doesn't make you not saved it doesn't affect the way that Jesus loves you if you believe one of these things and it doesn't mean that you're stupid or that you're not saved or that you are less than whatever it is I don't want anybody to feel that way when watching this video I actually want this to encourage you and maybe help inspire you to look at you know, okay, so what has the church adapted? And is that actually what we find in the Bible? Is that actually biblically sound and biblically true? Or is that just something that people have thought to be true? I hope that you are encouraged by this video and maybe you'll learn a couple things that are misconceptions. Okay, the first misconception is Christianity is all about being good and we get into heaven by being good. So on the outside, this can seem like a really, you know, comforting thing and something that is really good, but that's actually not true and when you look into it and critically think about it, it can actually be pretty scary. The reason that that statement or that line of thought isn't right is because if we go off of being good, then God's love and forgiveness is contingent on a human, a sinful human's feelings and a sinful human's actions. They change all the time, they're constantly moving and switching and changing, we're happy, we're sad, we're nervous, we're mad, whatever. And so if we bring God into what's good and he's not there when we do something bad, then by that logic, if we die on a bad day, we're not going to heaven, which is very unsettling. And that makes God seem like this puppet. He's not a puppet. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's in control and he loves you. He has forgiven you. If we're going off of what humans think is good, then it's going to always change. It differs all the time. Somebody could think stealing is good if it makes you happy. Somebody could think Hinduism is really good. Somebody could think that Satanism is super good. And that just differs because we are humans and we will think different things are good because of our biased opinions and because of our fleshly desires. But God isn't contingent on our feelings. Romans 5, 8 says God demonstrated his love for us while we were still sinners. Sin isn't good. I think most people would agree on that. Jesus didn't die on the cross for us because we were good. He died on the cross because we weren't good and he fulfilled what we needed to have in order to get to God to one day be with Jesus. What I'm not saying is that you need to stop doing good things, stop serving, because there's actually a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about laying your life down for a friend, taking up your cross. If somebody's thirsty, give them water. If somebody's hungry, feed them. If somebody is in need of shelter, give them shelter. Our standard should not be to be a good person because if that's the standard, then we're never going to achieve that. We're always gonna be working at that. We should hold ourselves to a higher standard in honoring him in what we do. Misconception number two is that Jesus was drugged and he didn't rise from the dead because he wasn't dead in the first place. So let's quickly go through what happened to Jesus before he was nailed to the cross. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that I will be talking about the torture that Jesus went through before he was nailed to the cross and I will be talking about that and so if you're sensitive to things like that then just skip to the time that you see on the screen and we'll pick up with more misconceptions. Um, I just don't want anybody to be caught off guard and you know be crying in fetal position <laughs> because of something I talked about. So if you're sensitive and then just skip, no worries. Uh, now on with the rest of the video. The Romans flogged him which means beaten and traditionally they would take a whip a uh, braided rope that had metal spikes in it and whipped him with it 39 times, shredded his back. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, causing his head to bleed. This was a form of mockery because, you know, Jesus said that he was the king of the Jews, he was the Messiah, and so they were mocking him by putting a crown on him and putting a robe on him and bowing down to him, but it was really mockery. And this is all before the cross. This is all before he, you know, when was even on the cross. This is just the torture that they did to him before and leading up to that. And then again, they struck him with a head of a staff and spit at him. All this alone, if they would have left him, he would have died from it. And then after that, he carried a wooden cross up a mountain. So this is just something that I think people, you know, 
kind of graze over and don't think about is he had to carry his own cross after his back was shredded with a crown of thorns that would be digging into his head because he has pressure from the cross on it and they nailed his wrists and his feet to the cross so if anybody has seen or read the book case for christ by lee strobel it talks about how he went to go see a doctor or i don't know if he was a doctor but it was something in the medical field and he went to talk to him about jesus and see okay so was it possible that jesus died or was he really drugged he went and investigated that and the medical professor whoever it was i don't know the technical terms but he said that it was impossible for him to stay alive being on a cross he was on there for hours so you have to come up breathe in come down to exhale right so you can only do that for so long before you just give out he died of cardiac arrest eventually and died but there was no way anybody could have ever survived that and jesus didn't but he rose from the dead and defeated death for good giving us a way back to him and jesus's death really did pay the fine that we need to cover our sins and to follow him. Misconception number three, God will protect you even if you walk into something evil or demonic. I see this a lot in progressive Christianity and um, new age, new thought circles is if I go into a psychic and if I get a psychic reading or if I go um, and do a Ouija board or do something like that, God will protect me because you know, I have the Holy Spirit in me. First of all, that's not something that would be honoring to the Lord or that he would take joy in. So. He won't lead you to do that. Therefore, he's not going to protect you walking into it because that is dishonoring and disobedient to what we are supposed to do as Christians, which is to honor him. He's not going to protect you for disobeying him. If you walk away, that's your free will. He gave you free will. You can walk away, but he's not going to protect you in that. So I think that we need to pray for discernment, for what is good, for what is bad, and to be convicted of things that are bad and that are honoring to the Lord and that will cause us to stumble. Misconception number four is the three wise men. A lot of people think that there are only three wise men because there are only three gifts. I just wanted to make clear that there could have been three wise men, but we don't know for sure. The Bible never says that there were only three wise men and it is more likely that there were more, but we get the idea that there were only three because of the three gifts, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Another little fun fact is the wise men had to travel a lot longer than just a night to see Jesus. It is most likely that he was around the age of two whenever the wise men came to meet him and brought the gifts. And misconception number five is the Saul to Paul transition and kind of what happened there. A lot of people think that Saul's name was changed to Paul because God changed it, God redeemed it. Many people had two names and that was the case for Paul. It wasn't like this big thing on the road to Damascus where you know God changed his name. Of course God can do that, but that wasn't the case. Paul's Jewish name was Saul and then whenever he followed Jesus, the crowd was the Romans, so he went by his Roman name, Paul. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and if you believed any of these things. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you next video. Bye.